Hi Dragonflies, welcome back to Dragonfly Spirit Studio. I'm Lynn Bauer. As you can see, this is once again the mobile edition of Dragonfly Spirit Studio, so I ask for your patience with things like background noise and not the best lighting and a pretty small workspace, but I think I can still give you something in this video that might be useful. I'll be continuing with my series on how to plan your watercolors in a later video, but in this video, I'd like to give you something for those times when you'd like to get into your studio, you want to do something relaxing with your watercolors, you don't really want a, a big challenge, you're not up to planning something, or you don't have a lot of time to plan, maybe you're painting on location. So this video will be what I call a postcard paint along. And this is something that you can do just to enjoy your watercolor, maybe to um, paint on location, maybe to introduce a child or grandchild or friend to watercolor um, and let them paint along with you. So let's get started with the very first postcard paint along. So I'm going to work using my travel palette and travel setup. And I know some of you may not have seen the video where I talk about what I take to the field. So I have linked to that in the uh, description section of this video in case you have questions about the materials that I'm using. So I'm not going to discuss that in this video, but you can follow that link and see what I take to the field in another video. But before I start, I want to do a little reminder about something that I have covered in my beginner videos, but not all of you may have seen. So you'll notice that most of my colors are pretty clean, but there is some contamination in this yellow well, and I know a lot of times people worry about contaminating colors, especially painting in the field. So I want to show you quickly how to deal with that. I don't worry about it while I'm painting, but then I take a paper towel and I stick it or a sponge, stick it right underneath that well, and I take my spray bottle and I just squirt and run off. Oops, I'm trying to get it where you can see. Run off any contaminated paint. So while you're painting, don't be too concerned about getting colors from one well into another well because those colors sit right up on the surface and you can just rinse them right off and you're not losing any more paint than you would rinsing your brush. So that, that maybe will reduce some of your stress level about getting color from one um, well into another well while you're painting. So I'm set up with my travel palette. I have some rinse water here and I have some clear water over here. And in this video, we're going to be doing this, um, working from this uh, photo of an iris. And we'll be using a technique that's called working wet into wet within a shape. I've purposely chosen a photo where the shape of the flower is very recognizable. So if you're going to try this same technique with other subjects, I suggest you do the same. Find something where uh, someone can recognize what it is simply by the outer silhouette, and that will make this technique work well. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some clear water to paint the shapes of the iris, and then we're going to add our color and let it move. But because I think you'll have a hard time seeing where the clear water is going, I'm actually going to add some color to my water, but I'm only doing this so you can see where I'm putting the water. You would use clear water for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create with lots and lots of water. I'm carrying a lot of water on my brush. First, the uh, shape of that upper set of petals, that sort of globe-shaped set of petals on my iris. I'm just going to kind of paint them with clear water, or what would be clear water. And then I'm going to take some nice intense color and drop that color in wherever the darker areas of my subject are and let it move. So now I'm, gonna, I'm not going to mess with that anymore. I'm just going to let that move. Now I'm going to move over and do the petal on this side. So again, with clear water, I'm using colored so you can see where I put it. 
I'm going to just kind of make the shape of that petal. And I am doing this just kind of eyeballing it. If you feel like you want to draw these shapes before you drop color in, you can. Um, and that, I'm glad that happened because that area actually, there was a little bit too much water. So if that happens to you, you can just mop it up. And now again, I'm going to drop in color. I've got a couple different colors going here just for fun. You don't have to follow the color in the photo at all. You can certainly just make up whatever color iris you want here. All right, let's move on and do this next petal down below that's coming down towards us. Just kind of wiggling my brush, making that, trying to make that edge sort of raggedy and frilled like it is in the actual iris. And I'm not worrying too much about getting it accurate. It'll be close enough. And now let's drop some color into that one. And since the color keeps moving, if you want to add some more color to your top one as you go, you can certainly do that. Now let's do this petal over on this side. So again, I'd be doing this with clear water. I'm using water with some color in it so you can see where I'm putting the color. And I'm also letting them touch earlier areas. I'm not worrying about that. That's okay. Now that I've put that one in, I kind of think I want to make this one a little bit bigger. I'm looking at the overall silhouette up here. That could be a little bit bigger. But I'm also trying not to get in there and start fussing and fiddling too much. Remember, this is a postcard. On a postcard, you can't do too much. You can't say too much. You can only write a couple sentences on a postcard, right? So I can only give the visual equivalent of a couple of sentences like to make this more rounded down here. Okay, now let's go on and do our stems. So now for the stem, <clears throat> I'm just going to paint uh, in a traditional way. So I'm going to mix up some green. I like to mix my greens maybe a little darker green. There we go. And I'm not going to, this time, I'm not going to let this brush stroke touch this lower petal because this is still wet and I don't really want a lot of green running up into my flower. But I will put in my stem just with a brush stroke. And this will work out just fine because at the top, the iris has that papery bit that connects it to the stem, so we'll add that now. I'm trying to just use the natural marks that my brush makes and not fill in an area, and that's one reason why I'm showing you this without drawing first. This is a great skill to acquire, to be able to just make brush marks do the work for you instead of having to draw everything and fill it in. Now, I don't think I like that um, dead flower behind there. I think I'd rather have a bud, and I actually think I'd rather have it over on this side. So let's paint that, again, using some positive painting. So I'll mix up some of the color that I used in my flower and I'm going to gray it down a little bit with the green because when the flower is still in bud, the colors are not quite so bright yet. And then I think I will just press down my brush. Maybe I'll extend that a little bit and we'll let that do for the bud. We don't have to say more than that for someone who has seen an iris to recognize what that is. 
So now I need a bit more green for the stem for my bud. And I'll just connect that right on up. And add that sort of papery bit to connect the bud to the stem. All right, and now a leaf maybe coming up this way or the tip of a leaf. I don't really know if I need the leaf, but let's put it in. So I'm going to load my brush with the green, but I think I'm going to add just a little red to the tip of my brush for a little color variation as I make this brush stroke. This brush doesn't really carry enough color to make that as one brush stroke, I guess. So I have to All right. Now, at this point, you could just stop. There's nothing wrong with this as a little postcard all on its own. You don't have to add a background to any watercolor. And this one certainly would stand alone. Um, I do want to show you a couple things you could do. So this is sort of a one dimensional uh, section of the painting. And I might want to have a little form to that, a little rounding. And it's just at that shiny stage where it hasn't dried. There's no puddle on the surface, but um, there's still a sheen. So if I take some clear water and drop it in, I can make an intentional bloom. And blooms take a minute to develop, so we have to wait for that to happen. But what's happening is the color is getting pushed out from that water that I just added. And I have a little more than I really need, so let me pick a little bit of that up. So now I get sort of the suggestion of a rounded form. So that's something you can do. My stem is too dry for me to pull that off. But I, I don't really love the fact that my stem and these other green areas are such different colors. And instead of adding something to the stem, I think what I'm going to do is pick up a little color from these already wet or still wet areas and let them go down a bit to match the stem. And help them blend in. So you could just stop at this point and write a little note on the back and mail it off to somebody and it would make their day, I promise you, even if your flower turns out to be a little bit wrong. Mine certainly is. It doesn't match the photo exactly, but I think most people would recognize it as an iris. So why feel the need to add a background? But I know some of you are thinking, well, but would you show us what to do if we did want to add a background? So yes, I will. I, I actually like it this way. I would prefer it without the background, but we'll add one. So to add the background, remember all of this stuff or much of this is still wet. So I can wait for it to dry if I want to, or what I can do is just be careful where I'm putting my clear water. So I've rinsed my brush and again with clear water, I'm going to start, I think up here in this corner and I'm going to wet an area of the background. And when I get up close to the flower, I'm going to come in, but not all the way up to it with my clear water. Even if I don't want white there, um, it will be easier for me to see where I'm putting my brush strokes once I have some color in my brush. And then over here, I'm just kind of dry brushing that out. And over here, we'll go around that shape. I I'm just going to go around the corner. I like to go around the corners of things instead of stopping right where the object has sort of a sharp corner. And you'll see why in just a minute. So now for our background, we're going to do sort of an out of focus green stuff in the background. And you see how my color got contaminated in the first place. So I'm mixing up some green. 
And then mostly what's happening in that background is kind of, there's a lot of vertical stuff, but I'm not gonna try to paint all those lines. That's too busy anyway, but I'm going to give it that same sort of vertical motion. And when I get close to my flower, I'll be a little more careful about where I'm putting my color. But mostly what happens is the water brings the color up to that shape instead of me having to try to work carefully around it with my brush. And I don't mind leaving a little light there. It almost looks like a light highlight. Let's leave a little light right there. So I'm not trying to fill in everything. And I'm stopping well before I get to the edge of my wet area. The reason that I'm doing that is that now what will happen is this color will blend softly out. So when I pick up down here to fill in more of my background, I don't have to try to do it before this dries. I don't have to try to match it up so closely. So this area is now working itself. I had wet to here and here. I don't know if you can still see it. So now I'm going to work in another area. Let's say down here and I'll wet the page again. Going up close to but not right over my shapes. This allows me to work quite freely around these shapes because I don't have to be exact with where I'm putting my water right now. And I just overlapped the area where I stopped before. So I don't want to go too far because I might create a bloom, although a bloom would probably work in this background, but I'm going to stop and overlap the area where I extended before. And now when I drop in my color, I'm going to stay away from that area. But that's okay because having little bits of light shooting through the background is really nice. It gives the painting some life. Now I left some white highlights here and here, so I think I'll leave some kind of on the same, I'll imagine the light is falling down maybe from above, and I'll leave little bits of white here and there. And you see I didn't connect that, I'm gonna just leave that as a soft white highlight. Might fill that part in though, since that's on the underside of the leaf. Now down here, I actually let my brush kind of go right over some of this green, which will help it blend in. I don't really want the eye to be drawn down there, so blending the green background with some of the, where the stem disappears from the page, actually works out just fine. Now rinse my brush, come back with clear water. Now this is kind of complicated area. So if I want to, I can say, I'm gonna do this part inside and I'll wet, I go around the corner, but I'll wet this area overlapping where I stopped before. And then I'll come down and wet this area and it would have been smart to mix up my green before I wet that area, but... So, don't be silly. Mix yours ahead of time. And now, that's a little bit bright. And again, I don't want to um, just have an outline around that, so when I come down here at the bottom, I'm just going to wet that and let the green that I'm adding into the background kind of come right into those lower areas. And then in here, I'll be a little more careful. So don't be afraid to let your colors overlap a little bit, as especially as things are leaving the page where you don't really want the eye to be drawn in the first place. And I let a little green get into a wet area there. It's moving into that petal. And that's okay too, because that's going to wind up just creating a little sense of shadowing. Now I actually came up farther than I 
meant to here. So let's let's soften that edge. All right. Now, right now, I know this looks a little mess messy, and the reason it looks messy is because all of these stray brush marks along the edge really influence us. So let's take a moment and wipe the tape down. It's amazing how much difference that makes to how you feel about whether the painting is done, whether you've done what you meant to. Okay, I just managed to wipe some of the page too, but that'll be fine. So at this point, again, you can say, I'm done. If you want to, you can go in and add more detail, but I'll tell you, this is one of those places where the temptation is to keep fussing and fussing until you wreck it. So the one place that I think I would make an adjustment is I'd like this stem to disappear underneath or be behind this petal. And the way to accomplish that is while this is still wet or if it's dried, get a little bit of green and just take a pale wash of green over the top part of that papery stem. And that pushes that a little bit into the background and helps knock down some of those whites that were drawing the eye too much. And again, I think I would say, this is done. I'm going to send it off to someone. So honestly, I like, them be like these best without trying to put in a whole lot of background. But if you did want to put a background in, that's one way to do it. Instead of going in and fussing and fiddling with this one, I suggest what you do is make another one. If you feel like you didn't pull this off really well, it's only a postcard. Take another postcard out, do another one. If you feel like, wow, I really nailed it and that's really cool, do another one. And pretty soon you'll have, you know, several postcards and you can write notes on them and send them to several people. And I promise you, when people get something like this in the mail, no matter how much you think it isn't that good and it's kind of crude, it's just a postcard. So you don't have very high expectations. The recipient is going to be delighted. They're going to pin it up on their bulletin board or put it on their fridge and treasure it. So if you're looking for something relaxing and fun to do and not too stressful and bonus points, you can do it with a friend who's never painted before. You can send it off in the mail and cheer somebody up. There you have it, little bitty postcard painting of an iris. I hope you have fun with it, and uh, I'll see you again with some more postcard paintings in the near future.